नमस्ते हरे कृष्ण प्रभु जी धन्यवाद प्रणाम हरे कृष्ण प्रभु जी धन्यवाद प्रणाम हरे कृष्ण प्रभु जी धनवत प्रणाम जय शिला प्रभु
हरे कृष्ण प्रभु जी धन प्रणाम जय श्री प्रभु का हरे कृष्ण प्रभु जी धनवत प्रणाम ऑल क्लोरिस टू शीला प्रभु पादन गुरु महाराज माते प्रभु जी हरे कृष्ण प्रभु जी धनवत प्रणाम जय शीला प्रभुपाद धन्यवाद प्रणाम और ग्लोरियस टू प्रभुपाद प्रभु जी ऑन म्यूट देयर प्रभु Oh, I didn't realize I am on mute and I am saying so many things. Do not pray for Prabhuji. Hare Krishna. Do not pray for Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna, Prabhuji. Do not pray for 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 Prabhuji. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna, Prabhuji. Do not pray for Hare Krishna. Do not pray for Prabhuji. 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 Prabhuji, one one quick question, Prabhu. Ah, uh, can't we live stream this to YouTube when you say because I see like YouTube upload it takes a lot of time. I think a week delay. We can also do the live streaming of the session to YouTube. So in that way, you know, if we forgot to join, we can immediately next day we can listen the sessions. That's a good question to Manohar Gopal Prabhu. Because we do here, Prabhu, live streaming of our Zoom classes, so that's what I'm trying to say. If we can do that, so in that way, no need to upload the um, sessions. Um, yeah, we can immediately it will uh, live stream. Yes, Manohar Gopal Prabhu, there. Prabhu Ji will join in two minutes, Prabhu Ji. Hare Krishna. You heard the you question, heard the Yes, Prabhu Ji. I'll inform him. Okay. Okay. So we will work on this problem, and he manages all the background tasks here. So I'll ask him what what it takes to get to that. Sure, sure, probably I can connect with him. You know, if needed. I mean, we are ah, doing here. Thing. Yes. Yes. Thank you, Prabhu. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Okay. Today we will do up to sixty one, and then only. Three will remain to finish Vaidhi Sadhana Bhakti. Om Ajnati Mirandasya Gyananjana Shalakaya Chakshurun Maritam Yena Tasma Shri Guru Venma Shri Chaitanya Manavishtam Stapitam Yena Bhutali Swayam Rupa Kadama Indadati Swapadam Vandeham Shri Guru Shri Yuta Patakamadam Shri Guru Vaishnavam Shri Rupam Sadrajatam Sahagana Dagunathan Vitam Tam Sajivam Sadvaitam Savadutam Padijana Sakitam Krishna Chaitanya Devam Shri Radha Krishna Padan Sahagana Lalita Shri Vishakhan Vitam Shah A Krishna Karuna Sindhu Dina Bandhu Jagatpati Gopesha Gopika Kanta Radha Kanta Namaste Tapta Kanchana Gaurangi Radhe Vindavaneshwari Vesha Bhanu Sute Devi Pranamami Hari Priya Vansha Kalpata Rubhesha Kripa Sindhu Vahe Vacha Patitanam Pavan Nidhya Vesha Vedya Namo Namah Jai Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Advaita Gadadha Shri Vasa Gaur Bhakta Vrinda 
Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare 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 Ram, Hare Ram, Ram Ram, Hare Hare. Mukham Karoti Vachalam, Pangam Langayate, Girim Yat Kripata Maham Bande, Shri Durum Dina Tarinam, Padmanandam Madhavam, Shri Chaitanya Ishwaram. Nama Om Vishnu Padaya, Krishna Prishthaya Bhutali, Shri Mati Bhakti Vedanta Swami Niti Namine Namaste Saraswati Deve Gauravani Pracharine. Nirvishesha Shunivadi Paschatya Desha Tari Panchita Patmakam Vishnu Bhattavi Pasuka Bhaktavataram Bhaktakim Namami Pashati Kam Very grateful to all of you for joining. We will start with number forty nine Atmani Vedanam Self Surrender. One who gives up all karmas and offer oneself entirely onto me is protected by me both in this life and the next. He achieves sarshti liberation. Having opulence is equal to mine. This is from Bhagavatam. One who gives up all karmas and offer and offers oneself entirely to me. Those, I mean, those who um, um, all they do is service to Krishna, whether one is in a Grahastha Ashram, Brahmacharya Ashram, or Vanaprastha Sanyas. I mean, naturally, um, it's actually it's not dependent upon the Ashram because one may do things for once. I mean, it's always mixed, but those who can do and offer everything entirely for the pleasure of Krishna. Um, and they are protected by Krishna both in this life and the next. Uh, he achieves Sastri liberation. Prabhupada says uh, uh, Sastri liberation is uh, like having the same opulence, but for devotees, especially Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's follower, it is Prema. Those who do everything for the pleasure of Krishna, they attain Prema for Krishna. Then Atma Nivedanam, Atma. Two meanings of Atma. Atma refers to the soul. Atma may refer to the body or mind also. This is very interesting because I was reflecting. Srila Prabhupada, um, when it comes to Atma, the word in Bhagavad Gita, Prabhupada says Atma, the Atma may refer to body, mind and soul. And I was thinking, oh, because when we come to Krishna consciousness, I remember my initial thoughts when I began Krishna consciousness. Generally, we refer to Atma as soul. Generally. So when I saw that Prabhupada is saying uh, Atma refers to Atma may refer to the body also. And I was thinking, oh, Atma may refer to the body also. Uh, Atma may refer to the mind also. Because, you know, the way we are taught uh, in our conditioned life. And then I was like, okay, uh, this is what Prabhupada says. This is like very beginning. And then when I was reading later on Nectar of Devotion, then I saw that Rupa Goswami refers to Atma Nivedanam. And this is the verse where Rupa Goswami, he says, Atma Nivedanam means complete surrender. That is surrender of the body, surrender of the mind, surrender of the soul. Um, um, everything, everything, either the soul or everything that belongs to the soul, everything you surrender to Krishna. And then I was remembering um, Srila Prabhupada, Purport in Bhagavad Gita. And then I was remembering what Shri Prabhupada says. My only qualification, I didn't add or remove anything. I'm presenting everything as it is. This is Guru Parampara. Guru Parampara means whatever is coming down in disciplic succession, all the acharyas, people they have plenty. I mean, not devotees, of course, but the question why is translation is Prabhupada is saying like this? As it is, a via medium, as it is giving us the teachings of Guru Parampara. This is a song by Bhakti Vinod Thakur. So here Bhakti Nathakur, he specifically this song on Atmanivedra. There are 
there's a, a list of songs called Sharanagati, where there is Atma Samarpan, Atma Nivedanam. In Atma Nivedanam, there are many songs. One of them is Manasa Deho Geho. Deho means body. Geho means home. My wife, my children, my home. Manasa mind, Deho, Geho, Jo Kichumo, whatever is mine. Arpilu Tuva Pade. I surrender. Arpan Kanu. I surrender to your Pade. Your lotus feet. Nanda Kishu. O Nanda Kishu. Um, Marobi Rakobi Joi Chatohar. Um, you can protect me, you can kill me. Nitya Dasa Prati Tuva Adhika. Now I am your servant and the master can treat the servant in any way one's like. That's the purpose of servant. I mean, that's the job of a master. He can do whatever he wants with the servant. And servant has just to surrender. So Nitya Dasa, and I'm not ordinary servant, I'm an eternal servant. So at any point of time, you can treat me any way you like. Nitya Dasa Prati. And to Adhikar. And Adhikar means you have a right. I mean, there is nothing like why. No question. A servant cannot ask Krishna why. Why? Because to Adhikar. Now you have you have Adhikar to do whatever you like with me. So this is Atma Nivedana. Rupa Goswami also says Atma Nivedana is very difficult to practice at the stage of Vaidhi Sadhana Bhakti. Um, because we are controlled by the three moods. And uh, because of false ego, that's a very, very difficult to act truly practice Atma Nivedanam, yet great saints consider Atma Nivedanam as part of Vaidhi Bhakti also, because this is something we are trying to practice. We are trying to surrender, and learning to surrender in all circumstances, surrender. So this is what Atma Nivedanam means. One of the Ramana Acharyas, he prayed, O oh Lord, whoever I may be, either a soul and body or a body made of Luna. Today I offer that I. is breaking up. Today I offer that I. Whatever I. So this also brings me as a beauty. That is very nice. Uh, should I try turning off See if that helps. Is it breaking for everyone? Yes, Prabhu. Yes, Prabhu. Yes, Prabhu. Hare Krishna. Mm. Um, how is the sound now? The clear is it better? It's better, Prabhuji. We will. Yeah, we will try. If it doesn't work, please stop me. Then I will join through phone. That will be a better option. Uh, so, I don't know what all I spoke and what all we heard. But uh, the Atma may refer to soul, body or mind. Um, and we were discussing this song of Manasa Deho Geo Bhakti Vinod Thakur. He says, my mind, my body, my home and my family, whatever I have, I surrender to you. And you can treat me in any way you like because I am your eternal servant. And uh, you have the adhika, you have the right to treat me in any way because you are my eternal master and the master can treat the servant in whichever way the master likes. This Atma Nivedana. Um, here Yamanacharya is praying, O oh Lord, whoever I may be, either a soul in a body or a deva or a human body made of the gunas, today I offer that I, today I offer that I to your lotus feet. Means that I refers to whether the soul, whether the body, whether whatever, whatever it is, whatever I is, I offer that. I offer that I to your lotus feet. Means uh, I as a spirit soul, as your eternal servant, offer that I, whatever else that I may need or whatever my whatever that is connected to I today I your eternal servant offer everything else to your lotus feet this is a prayer by Yamanacharya then um, oh lord this is from Hari Bhakti Vivek oh lord just as a sold animal has no need to think about one's maintenance so because I have offered my body and soul onto you I am no longer concerned with my sustenance my only concern is to serve you. 
so this shows that atman nivedana means it's a form of self surrender like it's a form of surrender or i surrender to you um if a animal is sold a sold animal then he doesn't have worry he doesn't have to worry the master has to earn i one lady came she has a dog western lady she has a dog um and then she said uh, once a week i cook a huge amount for my dog and feed little bit every day so now it's her anxiety that dog doesn't have to worry where my food is going to come from one devotee used to live here western devotee um and there is a company called chevy he has he has a cat and he would order everything for the cat so the cat doesn't have to worry where my food is going to come the cat is sold out the dog doesn't have to worry so a pet doesn't have to worry he doesn't have to search for himself so this hari bhakti vivek a, a, a devotee prays to the lord my lord i am like a sold out animal to you i mean we cannot say that because self surrender is very difficult but those who can practice they say that just as a sold animal i don't have to worry about my maintenance um my job is to serve you and you can take care of me if you like if you don't like so be it um, um i have no longer i have no longer i am no longer concerned about my sustenance my only concern is to serve you proper many times says uh, krishna is a maintainer krishna will maintain us proper given example of an elephant so there is no need to take lot of anxiety many parents have lot of anxiety about their children about their children education especially in america children education is a big one or future and many many concerns one has but when one surrenders then it's like my lord um, i am surrendering to you and it is your duty to take care of everything and um, again it's not an easy element to practice that's why rupa goswami says it is not easy to practice this in vaidhi sadhana bhakti unless one has that faith but it is a natural element of a raganuga bhakti when somebody is a raganuga bhakta because of his attachment to the lord and his faith in the lord he naturally surrenders and depends completely on krishna and he is attached fully to krishna but not in our stage and there is example of shivas thakur he would not work and is like my maintenance is up to krishna and krishna does not want to maintain me then i drown myself but his own sadhana swami maharaj says it cannot be copied that consciousness because the faith that shivas thakur has we don't have so we cannot just copy the activities when we don't have that devotion or that faith in the lord um, that's why it is said we follow but we don't and karan is not we don't we don't copy but we follow how is my sound good prabhu ji okay thank you mata okay then sakya this is where rupa goswami says sakya and atma nivedanam are very rare as they are difficult to execute during the state of sadhana very difficult to practice atma nivedanam because uh, we try to make full arrangement of taking care of ourselves but then when we leave everything to krishna krishna actually takes care but before krishna takes care we take care of ourselves <laughs> we make arrangement now whatever is provided is also krishna's care for us but somehow we miss the opportunity to give krishna a chance to take care of us and then we kind of feel like i am taking care of myself Uh, but this is the example of great souls like Shiva Thakur, and then Bhagavatam is full of such examples who are uh, totally dependent upon Krishna's mercy, and one who is fully dependent on Krishna's mercy, Krishna takes full care. Okay. Uh, Hare Krishna. 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 but atmanivedana is making one self a possession of the lord mm-hmm. sharanapatti or sharanagati sharanapatti means krishna will protect me but atmanivedana is uh, um, krishna owns me is making one self a possession of the lord krishna owns me um, just like hari bhakti vivek says 
a sold out servant is not has no need to worry just like a child who is helpless child young very young few one or two year old um, does not have to worry because he is completely depending on the parents the parents give full protection but when the child grows up and the child makes own arrangement and that child becomes independent then the parents provide the child who is grown up child whatever the child needs help with and whatever the child is taking care the parents let the child take care because he can take care but those who are completely dependent then the parents take full care likewise the devotee who has complete dependence on the on the lord the lord take it example only atmani vedanam is seen in king bali when he gave himself to the lord bali maharaj is an example of atmani vedanam what did he do the okay you took all the kingdom you took all the three planetary systems it's yours um, now i surrender my life to you you can kill me also so there he says now put the third step on my head so that is an example of atmani vedanam come only atmani vedanam then atmani vedanam can be by itself atmani vedanam mixed with the emotions of dasya is in king ambarish um he was like my lord you are my master i am your servant you can treat me in any way you like and then he did not react because he saw the fiery weapon coming from durvasa and also lord's arrangement and then he's like everything happens by the sanction of the lord and if this is happening then krishna has sanctioned it um, remote cause of all causes krishna and if krishna has sanctioned it so i must surrender now this is not easy if we are in maharaj ambri stage we want to surrender like this uh, even king bali stage they are very advanced devotee and they can practice this atma nivedan but there is example then atma nivedan mixed with the prayer see bhav emotions of a lover praying you see in rukmini we see rukmini surrender to krishna and rukmini said if krishna you don't come and steal me from this jackal like shishupal mouth of jackal then uh, from the durga temple where she went and waiting for krishna to come and steal me i'll commit suicide i won't serve you i have surrendered to you you can protect me and make me your own make me your make me your wife make me your own um accept me uh, or i i cannot give myself to anybody else this is also atma nivedana means completely surrendered she just sent a letter uh, no return came as such um, she was waiting the last time but she has already surrendered in her heart herself her body there is no difference between herself and her body for rukmini devi a donor associate of the lord um, but yet herself her body and everything i surrender to you and because she complete surrender krishna took complete care for maharaj ambarish for king bali for you know, rukmini so this is atmani vedana then nija priyo pahadana offering favorite articles uh, krishna told uddhava if someone offers me the best thing in their possession or anything very pleasing to them and also dear to me that will qualify one for eternal life um, no. so uh, this is a symptom of love when we offer whatever best we have for the sake of for krishna service whatever we hold dear most when we offer that to krishna one story that reminds me uh, of this principle is uh, uh, when uh, sakshi gopal when he came to jagannath then the king's wife had a very beautiful valuable diamond uh, um i think nose ring or earring one of the two and then she wanted to offer to sakshi gopal she went and she saw that there is no hole and she became very sad 
it was i mean it was worn by her ancestors but something very dear to her very valuable to her she wanted to offer to sakshi gopal so then she saw that he doesn't have the whole so she became morose and she came back then krishna came back in in her dream and krishna said see yashoda maya made a hole don't you see i have a hole come and offer me i'm waiting for it so she became very joyful she went and then she saw and the hole was there then and then she offered that i don't know earring or nose ring and then she was very pleased so krishna says something if whatever is whatever we hold is very valuable different people may hold different thing as valuable um, somebody may hold a position somebody may hold wealth somebody may hold or whatever whatever is most valuable thing if someone offers me the best thing in their possession krishna this is very nice i like it very much i offer it to you um, and if it is also dear to krishna that's excellent or anything that is very pleasing krishna for your sake this also brings this also reminds us of fifth chapter verse 29 where krishna says bhokta ram yagyata prasam i am the bhokta i am the enjoyer uh, prabhu says the only reason we are remaining in this world because we want to be the enjoyer we want everything to be for my enjoyment and everything that i want for my enjoyment we say krishna this is meant for your enjoyment i only want to remain as your um, as your servant i only want to serve you um okay. and everything krishna this is for your enjoyment um bhakti charu maharaj sham krishna prabhu was mentioning i loved it prabhu ji was saying um bhakti charu maharaj uh, he was mentioning that when we love krishna then we seriously pray to krishna krishna how can i give pleasure to your senses that is love krishna kavi raj gosam last is um how can i be the enjoy love is krishna now um it's it's like situating ourselves as an as a servitor as a servant not as a enjoyer and um, krishna how can i serve and make everything as an offering for your pleasure when i am not in the center and giving krishna the pleasure um krishna says to the then it qualifies one for eternal life then 51 tadarthe khila cheshtita doing everything for krishna among all the routine laukiki and vedic vaidiki actions that are performed basically all the routine actions lauk laukiki means which pertains to this world uh and vedic is which is referred in the scriptures what the scripture says or uh, what is um, um, what is material or whatever we do in this world whatever routine whatever is vedic actions that are performed the person desiring bhakti should perform those which are which are favorable for service to lord hari hari seva mukul narad pancharat narad muni says whether it's a routine job routine work whether it is something coming from scriptures whatever it is among all the actions the person desiring bhakti should perform those which are favorable for service to lord hari very difficult actually which are favorable which are favorable for service to lord hari most of the time it is i mean for sincere devote not for sincere devotees but for common people it is whatever is favorable for me my progress my happiness whatever is favorable for me um, but here whatever action is favorable for service to lord hari um hari seva anukul anukul to hari seva that is wanted that is what krishna says doing everything for hari whatever is favorable for my service to hari so we 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 can pray my lord um, let me engage in activities 
that will increase my service to you and anything if it is not favorable if it does not increase my service to you then let me not do that whatever is in whatever can help me do more seva to you please let that come whatever can block me from my service to you please block that i don't want that i just want my service to you to increase sharanapati accepting the lord's protection uh, one who surrenders to the lord in full conviction saying o oh lord i am yours and acts in that way with body mind and words accepting the lord's protection releases transcendental bliss hari bhakti class in other words one becomes devotionally very joyful um, devotionally very joyful um, when with body mind and words he um, he act he thinks he act with full conviction that krishna i am yours <clears throat> with so the discussion that difference between this and atmanivedanam atmanivedanam is sharanapatti means uh, krishna is my protector uh, in every situation krishna will protect me uh, atmanivedanam is i am a possession of krishna i belong to krishna and like a soul element and krishna can treat me in whichever way krishna likes Lord Nasimha Dev says, "If anyone prays unto me and takes my shelter, saying, 'I surrender unto you, Swam Prapan knows me, I shall protect them from all calamities,' Nasimha Purva, those who with their heart sincerely says that, 'Oh Lord Nasimha Dev, I surrender unto you,' Nasimha Dev says, 'I protect them for all from all calamities.'" or those who sincerely take shelter the lord will give them protection tadiya naam sevanam service to things related to the lord this is uh, this is from this is tulasi it says seeing seeing tulasi destroys all sins touching her purifies the body just touching the tulasi the body becomes purified um that's one thing we do is when we want say if we touch you know we have neck beads so we see devotees sometime um, if there is no way to purify we touch the tulasi you touch the neck bead and everything will become purified touching her purifies the body seeing tulasi destroys all sins bowing to her destroys diseases you see tulasi you bow down and it will destroy the diseases just like chanamrit akala mrityu sarvaham that is also taken away on time we get um, bowing to tulsi destroys diseases planting her bestows attachment of the mind to krishna if you plant to the sea new to the sea um, it will make your mind attached to krishna then offering her to krishna's lotus feet bestow special liberation that is uh, full development of krishna prema therefore i offer my respects to you this is from skanda puran um, um there is a verse that describes all this benediction uh, it is mentioned among all the service to the deities if we cannot bathe them every day um if you cannot dress them cannot ornament them cannot offer the garland to them no problem in temples we do everything but if you are not able to do those who have deities at home no problem you can offer a tulsi leaf to your lordship every day a tulsi leaf and if you have sandalwood you can offer tulsi leaves with sandalwood if you don't have deities and you have a picture of krishna that you are worshiping you can offer a tulsi leaf with sandalwood to a picture of krishna on the glass and offer it to krishna's lotus feet and krishna will accept it so there is lot of benefit it will bestow you a special liberation which is prem krishna prem if you can offer tulsi to lotus feet of krishna then this is then shastra hearing bhakti scriptures 
glorious are those people who hear and read the Vaishnava scriptures. Krishna is pleased with them. Those who worship the Vaishnava scriptures in their homes, worshipping Vaishnava scriptures means those who read Vaishnava scriptures in their home, become free from all sins and are praised by the Devatas. If somebody has Bhagavatam, Bhagavad Gita and they are reading regularly, then when Devatas say, oh, this person is reading Bhagavatam, they are like, this person is a great Vaishnava. See, he has Bhagavatam. This is Kali Yuga. Their mind is very agitated. People are very unfortunate. And three modes are very active. Passion ignorance is like overwhelmingly increasing. And this person is sitting in his home and reading Bhagavatam. So Devatas also praise such people. Lord Narayan himself lives in the house where Vaishnava scriptures are written and kept. Anywhere Vaishnava scriptures are there, just Vaishnava literature are present. Skanda Puran says Narayan lives in the house. Of course, we know that Bhagavatam is non different from Krishna. But any Vaishnava scriptures, Narayan lives because oh, this home is full of books about me. So Krishna is personally present there. And then this is from Bhagavatam. Srimad Bhagavatam is the essence of all Vedanta philosophy. It is also the commentary of the Vedanta philosophy. Bhagavatam itself says that one who derives satisfaction from its nectarian mellow will never be attracted to any other literature. If somebody can come to the point of deriving satisfaction from Bhagavatam, they will never be attracted to any other literature. One time I was remembering Yugal Kishore Prabhuji, he started reading Mahabharata. And then after 1520, he probably thought, you know, everyone is writing commentaries on Mahabharata. There are many nice stories on Mahabharata. So he started reading Mahabharata. Then he was telling us, um, me, Sham Kishore Prabhu, Bhagavad Acharya Prabhu, some of us were there. So Prabhuji was saying, uh, it's disgusting. Uh, Mahabharata is disgusting. Um, and then Prabhuji said, I can understand why Mahabharata is for less intelligent people. And then Prabhuji says, you know, after reading Bhagavatam, which is so nectarian, hearing how Kichak is trying to uh, force Draupadi to surrender to him, how Kauravas are taking, like how what they are doing and what they did to Draupadi and various other things. And the politics that is going on among them, the Shadayantra to kill them, and Krishna is hardly present there. Um, so Prabhupada was mentioning after hearing Bhagavatam, reading Bhagavatam, which is about Krishna's name, form, qualities, pastimes, devotees like Ambadish, Prala, Dhruva. Um, and uh, after hearing their glories and hearing this politics and this things that is going on in that, it's very disgusting to hear that and that's why uh, it is said uh, Mahabharat um, Vyasadeva says I have written Mahabharat for less intelligent people because those who are more intelligent are, are attracted to pure bhakti less intelligent people they want all these things and they derive joy in these things and that's why uh, Vyasadeva was not satisfied after compiling Mahabharat also because Krishna is like not the main character there. And Narad Muni tells Vyasadev, you have not written a scripture that mainly and only glorifies Krishna and his pure devotees. That does not, that is transcendental by nature. That does not have any mixture. But Mahabharata is mixed with many other things. Krishna is there. Bhagavad Gita is the main thing in Mahabharata. Otherwise, there are there is great teachings from Bhishma Dev, from Pandavas characters, and those things from Mahabharat, the teachings of Bhishma Dev, the characters, the purity of Pandavas, those things um, Vyasadev covers in Bhagavatam also. But, uh, Vyasadev took everything that is directly connected to pure bhakti and compiled this book, and which has Supplements here and there that are not that are details and does not deal directly with glorification of Krishna, 
Vyasudev didn't come covered them, didn't cover those in Bhagavatam. So Bhagavatam is considered as transcendental because it, it does not deal with the three gunas. And that's why Bhagavatam, then afterwards, Vyasadeva says, Bhagavatam is the essence of all Vedanta philosophy. By whatever you know in scripture, first of all, Vyasadeva is telling, I only wrote everything. And I have written everything. All the Vedanta, Upanishad, Vedas, Purana, Sab Nai Likha, everything I wrote. But this is the essence. The purpose and Krishna also says, don't be attracted to the flowery language of the Vedas. Because they mainly deal with three modes of material nature. Um, Krishna says, second chapter, Bhagavad Gita. Um, um, rise above these three modes. So, um, so one who derives satisfaction from its nectarian mellow will never be attracted to any other literature. Why? Because once they start experiencing rasa in Bhagavatam, transcendental, then for them, see, for somebody in goodness, passion and ignorance is disgusting. For somebody in goodness, they are not attracted to passion and ignorance. Somebody in transcendence are not attracted to goodness, passion and ignorance. Or mixed modes, um, naturally. So anybody who is attracted to Bhagavatam will never be attracted to any other literature. Then there is Mathuraya, Mathuraya, serving Mathura and other holy places. One who is attracted to places other than Mathura wanders in the material world, birth after birth, bewildered by Maya. Vara Puran says, if you like a place other than Mathura, you will wander in the material world birth after birth. When I remember one reporter asked uh, Prabhupada, so Swamiji, how is London? And Prabhupada said, London is hellish. And wherever Prabhupada would go, and they would build nice palaces for him. And Prabhupada would say, I only remember um, that small room in Radha Mother Mandir in Vrindavan. And then Prabhupada would go to Vrindavan. Prabhupada would feel like uh, Prabhupada said also. Prabhupada said, "Vrindavan is my home, and I have I have gone to for the service or the sake of service to the lotus feet of my spiritual master. But now I am back in my home. So for Prabhupada, there you know no facility in Vrindavan is like there are devotees like there is Indra Prabhu, there is Prabodhananda Saraswati, and the Goswamis." Once they came to Vrindavan, they never left Vrindavan. Prabhupada Saraswati said, for any reason, I will not uh, uh, leave. Um, um, even for any reason, I will not leave Vrindavan. Um, so anybody who likes any place, any place, um, what do we like? We like Niagara Falls. We like uh, camping. We like this place, we like beaches, we like this, this, this. So anybody who is attracted to places other than Mathura wanders in the material birth after birth. We want to develop our attraction to Mathura, our develop our attraction to Vrindavan. And how do we develop that attraction? We can hear about Vrindavan, we can visit Vrindavan. You know? And um, um, attachment to Krishna means attachment to Vrindavan. The bliss of prema, which is rarely obtained even by serving all the holy places in the three worlds, is achieved simply by touching the land of Mathura. Brahmanda Puran says, we all want prem. Goal of life is Krishna prem. It's rarely obtained even by serving all the holy places in the three worlds, is achieved simply by touching the land of Mathura. You go to Vrindavan, prema will be there. You can easily get prema there. Um, one time, one devotee was mentioning, when we do bhajan in Vrindavan, when we do bhajan in Vrindavan, the kind of depth we can access, we cannot, on the bank of Yamuna, um, where Krishna personally performed his pastimes, um, that the depth we can access there in our bhajan, we cannot access that in any other place. And that's why we see um, um, great devotees have great attachment for Vrindavan. 
Prabhupada was very attached to Vrindavan. Our spiritual masters are very attached to Vrindavan. Mm. Prabhupada and the Saraswati and others we were discussing very attached to Vrindavan. They never want Ainda Prabhu. They never want to leave Vrindavan because they experience. We don't have that experience. So for us, that is a theory. Because we don't live there and we don't do bhajan there. So we don't know the taste of it. Um, of doing bhajan. I myself in the same boat. Um, but then one mood, I mean, I personally, one mood that I personally carry is, um, yes, I'm not in Vrindavan. I don't have bhajan. I don't have taste in Vrindavan. And without that, I may not go back to Rindavan also. <clears throat> Some message is there. Prabhuji, when Mathura is mentioned, does it include Rindavan, Mayapur, Ayodhya, Jagannath Puri also? Yeah, Prabhu. In scriptures, uh, Mathura is referred to as Rindavan was part of Mathura, Prabhuji. Um, like we see Kamsa was the king of Mathura. Um, and uh, Vrindavan comes under him. He was the king of Mathura. And we see Nanda Baba and they are going to offer their, you know, cow ghee and cow milk to Kamsa. Um, so when we refer to Mathura, we by default we refer to Vrindavan. Um, okay. Um, okay. Anyways. <coughs> Uh, Srila Prabhupada's mood was, I mean, one thing, but there is a lot of importance of um, going visiting Vrindavan at least. Um, as far as living there is concerned, Prabhupada says, uh, uh, I mean, our mood is, uh, first of all, we are not qualified to live in Vrindavan. I am talking about some of us, at least for myself, we are not qualified to live in Vrindavan. Uh, second, our mood is preaching. Saraswati Thakur, if you see Saraswati Thakur's mood, um, God Krishna Babaji Maharaj was staying in Navadri and Saraswati Thakur went to Kolkata, then God Krishna Babaji Maharaj considers hellish. And Prabhupada has a statement saying that Vrindavan is sense gratification for me. For us, it's not sense gratification because we have no joy there and we are staying there because you know we may like many things that keeps us here. Um, <laughs> but uh, I mean the real answer is we have not experienced and we have not developed a taste for for Vrindavan. But we can understand from Brahmanda Puran and from great great our Acharyas. Um, the bliss of Prem, which is rarely obtained even by serving all the holy places in the three worlds, not just any place, all the holy places in the three worlds. Um, means all the holy places in Narkalok, holy places in Swarglok, Satyalok, Janalok, Tapalok, Mahalok, and holy places in earth. You can serve all the holy places in the entire universe and you will not attain the bliss of Prema, which is attained simply by touching the land of Mathura, which for us is Vrindavan. It's from Brahmandapura, then simply by hearing, remembering, glorifying, desiring, seeing, or touching the land of Mathura, one can achieve all desires. Um, all Puranas, they mention this. Does it include his con centers, New Vrindavan, Govardhan Eco Village? <laughs> yeah, we have faith in Shla Prabhupada words. So Prabhupada says, all my temples are Vrindavan. Prabhupada says. Um, <clears throat> yeah. One thing that Shivaram Maharaj mentions about this, he says, uh, um, there is a difference between the original Vrindavan and outside Vrindavan. And uh, Maharaj was mentioning the differences in the consciousness also. Uh, and Maharaj was saying, just like uh, a pure devotee can convert any place into Vrindavan. Uh, for example, like Govadhaniko village. And um, Shivana Maharaj, Maharaj also has a place in Hungary. It's called, uh, um, I think, uh, yeah, Nav Navavraj. Um, anyways, there is a place where he has replicated Vrindavan. 
and Mara says the difference between Nav Navabraja or um, New Vendavan or the um, or the Govardhan Nico village and the original Vrindavan, Mara says, quoting Shibra Maharaj, Mara says, these places can lose their potency if devotees don't sincerely serve Krishna, keeping Krishna in the center. Then they may lose their potency. And there is a possibility, suppose tomorrow, one of this place, no devotees live there, then um, it will lose its potency. Um, just for example, there is, I mean, this is a little bit controversial, but there is a verse which says um, the deities of Krishna, they reciprocate. If they, are like, if, they are, if they are nicely served, if the deities of the Lord are neglected in any temple, then the Lord leaves the deity. There is, there is one verse which says that the Lord leaves the deity form if the service of the Lord is neglected. Wherever the service is neglected, then it just becomes a statue. But the difference between other places and Vrindavan, even if nobody worships Vrindavan in Vrindavan and it becomes like commercialized, like which is happening and which will continue to happen in Kali Yoga, still Vrindavan will never Original Vrindavan will never lose its potency because Krishna directly performed his pastimes there. Other places can maintain and remain Vrindavan as long as Krishna is in the center. So conditioning is there as long as Krishna is properly worshipped there. Prabhupada said, all my temples are Vrindavan because Krishna is getting worshipped. Because Krishna is in the center. But any place where Krishna is not in the center, then it's no more, um, then it's, you know, Krishna is not in the center, then it's, it's no more a temple actually. Temple means Krishna is in the center. Prabhupada is in the center. So, uh, Shiva Mara says, there is difference and there is no difference. And then Mara says, it is my request to all the devotees to maintain the purity of this place. To always keep Radha Shyam Sundar in the center of everything you do. But still, original Vrindavan hold a special potency, as I mentioned the reason, because the dust was touched by Krishna's feet and Krishna personally performed uh, the pastimes for him. <clears throat> okay, so simply by hearing, and I mean if you if you see practically also, uh, simply by hearing, what do we hear about? We hear about what do we remember? We remember Yamuna. We remember Nandagaon. We remember Barsana. We remember Navadvip, Kola Dweep. Today we're remembering Kola Dweep. We remember. We glorify. We desire to go there. Or we, by seeing it, by touching it, the land of Mathura. So um, it is Achintya. It is inconceivably one and different. Um, so simply by doing that, one can achieve all desires. This is this glorification of Dham is mentioned in all the Puranas. Um, so serving Mathura in other holy places. Okay. And then there is Vaishnav Seva, service to devotees. Prabhupada explains this was very frequently. Aradhana nam sarvesham vishnu aradhanam param tasmat parataram devi tadiyanam samarchanam aradhana nam sarvesham. So this is a conversation between Parvati and Shiva. And Parvati Devi asks Lord Shiva, So what is the best form of worship? Whom do you worship? What is the, what is the best object of worship? Uh, then uh, Aradhana, Sabse Bada Aradhana Kya hai? Then Lord Shiva says, Aradhana Nam Sarvesham. Among, among all the Aradhanas, Vishnu Aradhanam Param. Among all the worship, the worship of Vishnu is topmost. Tasmat Parataram Devi, O Devi, O Parvati, O Devi. Tasmat Parataram. Parataram means even higher than that. Tasmat means even higher than. Vishnu Aradhana is Tadiyanam Samarchanam. Tadiya means that which is connected to Vishnu. And it is described as the devotees. They are connected to the Lord. 
tadiya naam samarchanam so worship of devotee is even higher than among all the worship all type of worship all type of demigod worship worship of vishnu is supreme o devi worship of his devotees however is even superior to that this is on service to devotees singa vaishnav this is this some quotes this that rupa goswami quotes singa vaishnav helps one develop bhav for the lord's lotus feet and this vanquishes one's material miseries this is very interesting um, when we remember the lotus feet of krishna the material misery will vanquish many time we are recently discussing how the mind becomes contaminated and how the contamination of the mind can be removed by bringing the lotus feet of krishna in our mind ashla prabhupa says we can control the mind by remembering by fixing the mind on the lotus feet of krishna fixing the mind on the lotus feet of krishna and here shrimad bhagavatam says now somebody may say but i don't have any attachment developing bhav for lotus feet lord's lotus feet we have bhav for many things but not for krishna and if i mean if we just consider feet we don't feel anything but if the bhav comes for lotus feet then you will be attracted to lotus feet and newer and newer rasas will come by remembering the lotus feet newer and newer emotions will arise love will arise just by remembering the lotus feet and because the newer and newer bhav develops for lotus feet of krishna it is possible them for the mind to be fixed on the lotus feet of krishna and that's why we see lakshmi devi does not want tulsi devi does not want to serve the lord but they both want to serve the lotus feet of vishnu lotus feet of krishna and it says when the lotus feet of krishna enters the mind the material misery will go down and this verse is serving a vishnu serving a vishnu helps one develop bhav for the lord's lord's lotus feet and vasana mara says serving a vishnu means serving the guest whoever you know whatever devotees you know uh, wherever there is an opportunity if you can try to serve them the bhav for lord's lord's lotus feet will enter your heart singa vishnu whose body is marked with tilak symbolizing conch and disk who has tulsi manjaris on head and whose legs are smeared with gopi chandan destroys all sins this is this is the first one is the importance of serving a vaishnav the second one is seeing a vaishnav with a tilak and other symbols uh, will destroy the sin will destroy destroys all sins uh, simply by our remembering you this is from this is uh, from first canto 19 chapter the appearance of sukadev goswami the last chapter of first canto and when the devotees of the lord saw sukadev goswami they said simply by remembering you our houses become instantly sanctified our houses become instantly sanctified what to speak of seeing you touching you washing your feet and offering you a seat in our home um, the importance of uh, um, Uh, remembering a vishnu and uh, just by remembering a vishnu uh, uh, the heart the mind the house uh, everything becomes sanctified becomes purified by remembering a vishnu uh, okay those who claim this is from adi puran those who claim to be my devotees are not my devotees those who are the devotees of my devotees i consider them as real devotees we have heard a lot about it the story of saraswati thakur also um, one devotee went to him and he said i want to talk about krishna uh, he said uh, introduce me he said i am a devotee of krishna i have some questions for you saraswati thakur says right now i am busy we'll talk later come back after some time another one come another another person came and he said uh, uh, i am a servant of krishna servant i have some questions for you so sir thakur says come come inside to my office let us talk because he introduced himself as the servant of servant as a devotee of krishna's devotees 
um and this last point is very important all the angas of bhakti described in relation to the lord or also angas in relation to the devotees what are the angas of bhakti shravana kirtana smarana vandana uh, all the angas of bhakti that apply to the lord also apply to devotees shravana means hearing about devotee Prabhupada in one of the lecture I was listening, Prabhupada was saying, we can hear about Krishna's pastimes and we can hear about Bhishma Dev passing away. And then Prabhupada says, according to uh, Aradhanam Sarvesam Vishnu Aradhana Param Tasmat Parantara Devi uh, Tadiyanam Samarchanam, according to this verse by Lord Shiva, uh, Prabhupada says, hearing about Bhishma Dev passing away is even higher than hearing about Krishna. Prabhupada says, because this is service to devotees, hearing about Krishna is service to Krishna, hearing about devotees of Krishna is service to devotees of Krishna and service to devotees of Krishna as per Lord Shiva is higher. And that will actually give you bhav for the lotus feet of Krishna. Importance of, and Prabhupada very much condemns the principle of jumping to 10th canto and very much interested in Krishna's pastimes and not so much interested uh, in hearing about devotees. And that is also considered as a contamination of the heart. Because sometimes people are attracted to Krishna's pastime because um, Krishna's pastimes are, and there is dealing with gopis and there is dancing. And those things are naturally attractive to a common man um, living in, influenced by the three modes of material nature. And being influenced by three modes of material nature, they want to relish Krishna's pastimes because, um, because of the mode of passion ignorance in their own. But a pure devotee like Srila Prabhupada, he discriminates that. He says this is not good going to 10th Canto Bhagavatam and hearing about Krishna's Ras Leela. Because that desire is also coming because of our own, our own contamination. And it's very difficult to see what bhakti is and what is not bhakti. Uh, because we are contaminated by modes. But what Srila Prabhupada was saying, this is even higher. Because service to devotee is higher than service to Krishna. Now all the angas that relate to Krishna also apply to devotees. Shravanam about Krishna. Kirtanam, glorifying the devotees of Krishna. Kirtanam, speaking about the glories of the devotees of Krishna. Shavanam, Kirtanam. Kirtanam also means chanting the names of devotees of Krishna. Chanting the qualities. Chanting the pastimes of devotees of Krishna. Um, and then uh, Kirtanam. Smaranam. Remembering the devotees of Krishna. Vandanam. Offering prayers to devotees of Krishna. Guru Maharaj, please protect me. We see Raghunan Das Goswami says, if lust, anger, envy, these are highway robbers, and when they come to capture me, I call out to all oh, devotees of the killer of Baka, and they will come and they will save us. The devotees of the Lord will come and save us. Um, so, Vandanam, offering prayer. Dasyam, acting as servant. Sakyam means um, trying to serve them. Try to, trying to serve them. And Sakyam, we saw, also means... Uh, um, have faith in them that by praying to them um, they can pull me out or prayers to them they hear and they can reciprocate having faith in them uh, and Sakyam and then um, Atmani Vedanam is also there surrendering ourselves to the devotees so whatever Anga applies to Krishna applies to devotees as well and service to devotees will give you service will give you bhav to uh, Padakam, the lotus feet of Krishna. And then 57 is Vaibhav Mohotsa, observing festivals as per one's ability, one who performs a festival for the Lord according to one's financial position, experiences for eternity a festival in the planet of the Lord, Padma Puran. It says according to one's financial position. However, whatever festival is there, um, do it grand according to your capacity. Um, some people have this mentality of um, um, like I remember one time um, we had Nitai uh, Padipavan Gaurahari confidential. Um, I mean not very confidential devotees are listening. Many devotees are there or go to YouTube. But anyways 
it's a principle we had the type of God Hari initially. This is in the beginning days of Nitai Padma God Hari. And uh, Radha Gopija Mallabha came much later. Um, so I was having this service of making garlands. That that time I used to make garlands every day for the type of God Gaur Hari. Um, and we were very, very small. There were 25, 30 devotees. Our finances were also very tight. Um, and then um, I used to go and buy flowers also. So one, one devotee, uh, they said, Prabhu, these flowers are expensive. Uh, so let us buy um, these flowers for God with that. Anyway, they understand that we are uh, you know, we are not so well at this point of time. They understand. Um, and then Yugal Kishore Prabhuji, then I asked Yugal Kishore Prabhuji, Prabhuji what, what do you recommend on this program? Prabhuji said, buy the best one. Don't worry about it. Just go for the best. Everything everything best for Krishna. This is Guru. Everything best for Krishna. Mm -hmm. uh, so it says, one who performs a festival for the Lord according to one's financial position. Um, there is an example of devotees offered uh, 500 kilograms of flowers to Radha Gopinath. And then, um, and next year, uh, um, devotee said uh, to Radhanath Maharaj that um, it's very expensive and our finances are not very good. Um, and the flowers, uh, we offered them the flowers, um, 500 kilograms of flowers. And then we throw them after two hours and hundreds of thousands of rupees uh, are invested in this and we are not doing very well at this point of time so can we reduce the quantity anyways we will do the festival we'll offer the flowers let's buy two, 250 kgs of flowers <laughs> then Mara says no it has to be 500 uh, Krishna will provide so we see from um, from the great devotees of the Lord who are setting example for ourselves that um, um, this is one of the part of Vedisarna Bhakti is uh, one who performs a festival for the Lord according to one's financial position means if and we should have faith that Krishna provides. Actually, Krishna provides. Um, actually, any pure desire we have, what we see from this uh, great Vaishnavas, any pure desire we have to serve Krishna, Krishna will fulfill your pure desires. If your desire is just to serve Krishna, Krishna will make all the arrangements so you can serve him in that way. But if you have mixed desire, then Krishna will trouble you where the mixture is there and he will not give you because he wants you to give up that mixture part. But wherever pure is there, then Krishna will provide. So one who performs a festival for the, for the Lord according to one's financial position experiences for eternity a festival in the planet of the Lord. Uh, experiences for eternity a festival in the planet of the Lord. I mean, once you go there, everything in abundance. Right now, you know, we may be in scarcity and we have some loans and we have, we are in, we may be in a lot of struggle financially. Yeah. Many temples are mostly struggling anyways. We may be in struggle, but then if we use the finances to serve the Lord to the best of our ability, then it will guarantee us an eternal festival in the kingdom of God. There, you enjoy an eternal festival with full opulence. Krishna will give that to you. If here, you don't worry about finances, especially when it comes to the service of the Lord. Yet, if you don't have anything, then do the best you are. Like the example of Kola Vicha Sridhar, he had almost very minimalistic income. He doesn't have clothes to wear. He would wear torn clothes. He doesn't have a roof. When it would rain, when it would rain, he would not spend money to fix his hatched, hatched roof. So it stops raining. And he was bent on using 50% of his income to worship Ganga and Tulasi. To worship Ganges with Tulasi or whatever articles are required. He has very minimalistic income. 
So 50% he would use. If we were there, we will be like, अरे यार यहाँ पे यहाँ पे घर के ऊपर पानी लीक हो रहा है पहले रूफ फिक्स करना है उसके बाद एक एक वर्ष इतना भी क्या बट ये भी सीखो ले बेचा श्रीधर उनके पास पहनने के लिए कपड़े नहीं है doesn't have clothes to wear doesn't have roof on his head and still he is bent on using 50% of his income to worship ganga so chetne mahaprabhu says um, i will reveal your your treasure uh, you are you are cheating everybody by showing as if you are very poor i will reveal to the whole world What hidden treasures you have kept without telling anybody? I will reveal that to everyone one day. Just see. So this we see. Someone who performs the festival for the Lord according to one's financial position, uh, best for Krishna. Experiences for eternity a festival in the planet of the Lord. And then fifty eight is Urja Daro, uh, observing vows of Kartik, just as Lord Damodar is affectionate to his devotees. The Damodar month is also. This is the last one we will cover. I see it's nine forty now, and then we will have only seven remaining that we will cover next week. That will complete our sixty-four angas. Urja Dado, yeah. Just as Lord Lord Damodar is affectionate to his devotee, the Damodar month is also affectionate to the devotee. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Even a little service performed during that month yields great result. Like Damodar, he loves his devotee. Krishna loves his devotee. So the mass, the Damodar month, the Damodar month is also affectionate to the devotee. And even a little service performed during that month, the month, the Damodar mass itself, because the month of Krishna and everything, um, everything in our Vedic culture is personality. Um, whether it is Mother Earth, whether it is the ocean, whether it is the mountain, whether it is the river, and whether it is the months. So the Damodar month is also, and whether it is the Nam, we say Nam Prabhu. So the Damodar month is also affectionate to the devotees. Even a little service performed during that month yields great results by observing the Damodar Vrata in Mathura. Even once, a devotee can easily achieve bhakti. Which the lords awards very rarely. Krishna award this from Padma Puran. Again, have faith in Shastra. Have faith in Shastra. Um, um, we may not see. We we conduct our life based on our experiences, which is not the best thing to do, because many things which are beyond our experience, we may not have faith in them. That's why the recommendation is. Uh, Live the life based on shastra. So Padma Puran says, the Lord awards bhakti prema very rarely, but by observing Damodar Vrata in Mathura, even once a devotee can easily achieve bhakti. The Lord may offer liberation or material enjoyment to his devotees who worship him elsewhere. So anybody who is worshiping the Lord, Lord may give. Them material opulence and other desires, whatever desires they have for name and fame, position, power, woman. Lord may fulfill all their desires. Be happy with this. But Lord giving bestowing bhakti is very rare. But those who practice the modern month vrata in the in I mean the mod in the in the month of Kartik, the vow the modern vrata. Uh, in Vrindavan, the Lord can very easily award bhakti. Okay, so we that's all we will discuss. If there are any discussions, we can we can see any questions. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. What is the difference or it can be same? same. Atma Samarpan is same Prabhu as Atma Nivedana. Uh, Sarana Pati is different. But how Rupa, one of the Angava Bhakti Sarana Pati one of them is Atma Nivedana 
and how Rupa Goswami describes Sharna Pratti's Lord is my protector and Atma Nivedanam is I surrender. And he gives an example like Sharna Pratti's Lord will protect me and Atma Nivedanam means I am a possession of the Lord. I mean, not. So there is a difference. In, I mean, in English, both are same, right? I mean, self surrender. Like uh, protector. Protector means Krishna is my protector, means um, Krishna will protect. Um, yes. I go to forest, like Prabhupada says, one of the quality of sannyasis is fearlessness. Because they have faith in Krishna's protection. So they don't have fear about snakes and other um, poisonous animals. Because they have faith in Krishna's protection. We become fearful by seeing any normal um, big, um, big, <laughs> you know, like a bumblebee or like uh, madhumakhi or like, like, oh no, what do I do now? So we become fearful very easily. Not even from there, she's not poisonous uh, and she doesn't harm unless we harm her. But by seeing anything, the fear may come. But the great devotees of the Lord, they are fearless because they know it's very difficult to have that faith that nothing can happen unless Krishna sanctions. Very difficult to have that faith. But that is one of the Anga, that Krishna will protect. But Atmani Vedanam is like um, protection is within Atmani Vedanam. And everything else. Maintenance is also there with the Atman Vedana. Um, I mean, uh, Atman Samarpan is a subset of, of Atman Vedana. Then they are similar, yeah. I offer body, mind, everything. I surrender to Krishna. Or in other words, Krishna can use whatever I have. Like, you know, one thing is, this is what I have. And I can use it for my purposes. How I can derive benefit from it or how I can control that. Everything I have, I control that. And Atma Nivedanam, which is self-surrender, is whatever what I myself and whatever I possess. My mind, my body, my my home, Gehu. Um, and now it's a possession of the Lord. So if it's a possession of the Lord, then the Lord may control I or what I have the way he likes. Lord can twist and turn whatever he likes. And I am just surrendering because everything belongs to him. But general principle is, this is I and this is my end. So I control and I run the show the way I like. Atmani Vedanam now, everything belongs to Krishna. So Krishna possesses everything now. If he really possesses everything, then I am out of the center. Mm -hmm. Then he can do whatever he likes with whatever I have. You know, like if it is something my possession, then I use it the way I want. If something Krishna's possession, then then it's not my possession. Then Krishna uses the way he likes. Very, very difficult. It is said it is not possible. It is very rare to see Atma Nivedanam. Um, and the, in Vaidhi Sadhana Bhakti, it's usually visible in Raganuga Sadhana Bhakti when there is strong attachment to the Lord. As we uh, we have no problem. If we have strong attachment to our son, we have no problem handing our business to our son. Yeah, no even the business. Mm -hmm. Likewise, uh, when we are attached to the Lord, we have no problem handling everything we have and that we possess as the Lord, the Lord may run the show. Like, surrendering and making I am the now I now Lord is I am the possess I am basically Lord possess me and Lord possess all I have and it's his and he uses the way he likes so zero control I have because nothing belongs to me does it make sense for me when it clarifies uh, yes well, but it's very mean uh, a mix I mean, <laughs> it's we can say in simple words, it's next to impossible <laughs> because we are in the center. But the principle Rupa Goswami is telling, we are trying to understand. We agree 
we it's a far long way to go but we understand the principle and that's the purpose of bhakti shasti course for you, is the principle rest is our sadhana okay yes boss man i was just trying to uh, compare with the movie or serial like right? something some criminal comes um, i mean aap us par pad karta hu मतलब ड्यू टू फियर देयर इज डूइंग आत्मसमर्पण बट हेयर आत्मनिवेदन मीन ड्यू टू नॉलेज मीन गॉड या एवरीथिंग बिलोंग्स टू गॉड सो एंड दैट इज नॉट समर्पण दैट्स इंस्टेंटेनियस इन सरकमस्टेंशियल आत्मसमर्पण दैट्स नॉट ट्रू बिकॉज़ द मोमेंट ही गेट्स अ चांस ही विल रॉब अस Yes. Thief or criminal, he will kill us. The moment he gets a chance, he is taking advantage of this principle to say. Or man, me to gussa hai na. Oh hai. Yes. Badla, badla lenge. Aap dekho. Abhi to chhod do. To kuch samarpan to nahi hai na usme. Or to lip service ho gaya, prabhu. Yes, prabhu. Thank you, prabhu. Thank you. Thank you so much for the pleasure. Hari. Hari. कुछ और डिस्कशन सवाल तो दमत प्रणाम के वजह हरे कृष्णा दंडवत प्रणाम पाल जी हरे कृष्णा तो ये तो ये जस्ट फॉर द मैटर ऑफ अंडरस्टैंडिंग आई नो इट्स वे बियॉन्ड टू आस्क बट तो जी लाइक वी हियर दैट द लैंड ऑफ राजा जस्ट टू टच द लैंड ऑफ राजा इज गुड फॉर एज यू हर्ड लाइक लाइक वे यू मेंशन लाइक डूइंग भजन नियर या एट द बैंक्स ऑफ यमुना इज वे डीपर लाइक वन डे व्हाट वाज शेयरिंग ऑन द डे So, Prabhu ji, uh, just for the matter of understanding, I'm asking like we hear that we are wherever mind is. So, if 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 we are, if if somehow our for the matter of understanding, if our mind is there, so will we get the same benefit as being there? Just to understand that. Prabhu, Prabhu yeah, I mean, Rupa Goswami does mention if we cannot live there, then we can live there mentally. But Prabhu ji, difference to hai. देखो मतलब अगर हम लोग सोचे तो इफ लिव देयर मेंटली वी लिव देयर मेंटली मे बी ड्यूरिंग सम टाइम ऑफ अवर जब मे बी सम टाइम व्हेन वी रिमेंबर अदरवाइज वी आर नॉट देयर बट व्हेन वी आर देयर वी आर एक्चुअली देयर सो देयर इज अ डिफरेंस ऑफ एक्चुअली लिविंग देयर लिविंग देयर मेंटली एंड बट देन आवर सरेंडर इज टू द वाणी ऑफ श्री प्रभुपाद एंड गुरु महाराज एंड राइट नाउ सेवा इज मोर इंपोर्टेंट देन भजन because the thing is we don't have taste for bhajan even if we go there and do bhajan purpose will fall down and that is a fact when we go there and we don't have service and we don't have we don't know what to do because right now we are healthily engaged to the wherever we are chahe to prachar kar rahe hain chahe to koi seva kar rahe hain kahin na kahin hum log engaged hain ye abhi hamare liye favorable hai aage jaane ke liye isse hum bhakti mein aage jayenge isliye hame ye ये करना हमारे लिए आवश्यक है ऐसा नहीं कि कोई सेक्रीफाइस कर रहे हैं और कोई रास्ता नहीं है प्रभुपा जी बोले प्रभुपा जी ये लिखे हैं फिर प्रभुपा जी बोले कि इफ यू गो टू वृंदावन एंड चैंट लाइक हरिदास ठाकुर प्रभुपा जी बोले यू विल फॉल डाउन एंड देर आर एग्जाम्पल्स हु आर डूइंग दिस बिकॉज कृष्ण सेज यू हैव टू वर्क अकॉर्डिंग टू योर नेचर अभी हम लोग ट्रांसेंटर स्टेट में तो पहुंचे नहीं है रजोगुण तमो गुण सत्व गुण है अभी उन गुण को वहां पर यूज करना भगवान के समय में बड़ा कठिन है क्योंकि सभी लोग भक्त हैं और यहाँ पे क्या है कि यहाँ पे हमारा थोड़ा आ, मतलब हमें अच्छा लगता है यहाँ पे क्यों क्योंकि चाहे तो प्रचार है चाहे तो रिस्पॉन्सिबिलिटी है सेवा है एंगेजमेंट है अभी वहां जाए क्या करेंगे पता नहीं मतलब वहां पे भी भगवान वो क्रिएट कर सकते हैं आ, पर अभी हमारे लिए फेवरेबल ये है पर अगर बात आती है कि क्या वहाँ का महत्व महत्व तो बहुत है प्रभु वहाँ का बहुत महत्व नहीं तो वेन आई वॉज रीडिंग प्रभो न सरस्वती वृंदावन महिमा अमृता वो बोल रहे हैं कि दुनिया आर से पार हो जाए बॉम्ब ब्लास्ट हो जाए वर्ल्ड वॉर आ जाए जो भी हो जाए मैं व्रज नहीं छोड़ूंगा मैं व्रज से एकदम दूर नहीं रखूंगा देन इट मेड मी थिंक यार क्या अटैचमेंट का वृंदावन से मतलब देर इज समथिंग विच विच शास्त्र से विच दिस ग्रेट डिवोटिस the experience in vrindavan by living and this quote i was reading by one of the brajwasi he was sharing we cannot understand the depth of bhajan in vrindavan unless we actually come and do bhajan there so it's difficult to understand because there is no experience uh, but theoretically we can understand 
and we don't need to take any artificial action we can we are maybe let's say preparing ourselves let's say if you take a humble position krishna yahan rehke to shayad bhagwan ke log nahi jayenge aapke paas nahi aayenge prem ko hi prapt nahi hoga gire hue rahenge gira hua rehne lo aapki seva karte rahenge situation mein kyunki isi mein hi hame engagement mil raha hai aur yahi ab yahan pe agar hum hain to wo bhagwan ki ichha hai na sab kuch agar jaise prabhupad ji prabhupad ji we came to west prabhupad ji did not say i came to west prabhupad ji bole krishna if you brought me here there must be some purpose If you have brought me here, there must be some purpose. So Prabhupada ji खुद endeavor किए visa लगाए सब दोस्तों को बोल रहे steamship company शिंडी या steamship company से बात किए struggle करके Prabhupada ji यहाँ पे आए उसके बाद लिख रहे हैं कृष्णा इफ यू हैव ब्रॉट मी हियर देर मस्ट बी सम पर्पज एफर्ट पूरा उनका है बोले कृष्णा यू हैव ब्रॉट मी हियर सर वी कैन टेक द सेम मोड इफ कृष्णा इफ पुटिंग अस इन डेट एवर सिचुएशन then krishna you must have some purpose please engage me in the self in in that purpose and our hope is yes what it says we are not able to follow agreed but our hope is our pride is we are trying to serve guru parampara okay shri prabhupad wanted and we are trying to do some service that is dear to our heart that we may not be able to there also and right now that our attachment to service our engagement our vaishnav seva whatever it is will give us qualification for vraja we know that is the highest we know abhi gire hue log hai hum log but we know this is the way to go and that gives us satisfaction does did i answer prabhu ji your question in all from all ways really <laughs> thank you prof thank you very much Anything else? Anyone else? Okay, I am very very grateful to all of you for joining. Thank you very much. Vancha kalpata do bhesha kripa sindhu be eva cha pati ta na bhava ne bhio vaishnu ne bhio namo namo ananta koti vaishnu brinda ki jai shila prabhu pat ki jai dhan pranam sare kish. If I spoke anything wrong, please forgive me as a humble servant. Thank you very much. हरे कृष्णा प्रभु जी धनबत प्रणाम प्रभु जी ऑल क्लोरिस टू शीला प्रभुपाद थैंक यू माता जी धनबाद